Greetings. This is Body Culinary sending you all some warm, positive vibrations. So just wanted to uh, touch in really uh, quickly on uh, this early day to, uh, first of all, welcome you to the channel if you're new to this channel. Uh, and I share things on this channel about my journey of radical self-acceptance as a person with very fine, delicate, Afro-textured hair. Right now, doing um, semi-freeform locks in that journey, which I like to call Afro locks, as well as sharing a journey, a long journey of several decades of all the way to whole living unprocessed foods, right? As a lifestyle, not a diet. Encouraging folks to cultivate a personal movement practice as well as reconnect. Greetings. Uh, reconnect to nature, even if you're in a small apartment, even if you're in a cold region by growing plants, especially things that you can eat. So those are some of the things that I share on this channel. And um, this morning, what I wanted to touch in on is brushing locks. So if you have um, very fine, cottony, Afro-textured hair, I'm sure that many of us have tried a lot of the tutorials that we see on YouTube. Now, I personally, my first number one concern is comfort <laughs> and health. I actually really value being comfortable. So as someone that is tender headed, I do not care for tight hairstyles. Um, I wish to keep my eyebrows and the hair and my eyelashes and my hairline is delicate intact and preserve them for as long as possible. Maybe when I'm 80 or something, it'll fall out. If that's, you know, if that happens, then so be it. However, I would really like to preserve and appreciate and sit in appreciation of what I was born onto the planet with and just preserve it like a fine car. So um, there may be some folks that are out there um, brushing their locks. So we try these different things that we see on YouTube because technology now offers us the opportunity to peek into each other's kitchens and bathrooms and see what each other are doing and try it on for size. So if anything that I say here resonates with you and you're welcome to try it, do understand that you're 110% responsible for your health and what you try. Right. So don't go blaming YouTubers. <laughs> You're your responsibility. And that can actually be very empowering. If you try something on for size and it doesn't work, work for you or it may work and then it doesn't work, depending on how you're um, evolving in your lifestyle, then drop it and try something new. Also, uh, keep in mind that you may not be doing something long enough to see if it yields a certain result and you could be just hopping around from channel to channel. So it is a discovery process and that's your journey when it comes to hair, food, you know, lifestyle, all of that. So when it comes to brushing locks, I've seen a couple of women brush locks. I've seen some Rasta sisters in my um, neighborhood um, brush their locks. And I always wondered about it, you know, because you want to be creative. I like low maintenance. I like health. I like to be comfortable, pain-free. But also you're curious, you know, our vanilla counterparts, you know, growing up, they had in the different fashion magazines, brush your hair with a hundred strokes. Now, you know, brushing this with a hundred strokes, your hair is gonna, not going to be on your head. Plus it kinks and it tangles. So they're not, they're not the same. However, I have tried with a little baby brush and then one a little bit, um, a little bit firmer to brush um, lint um, out of my hair. Um, very delicately and also at the ends, but I don't really get much lint because I don't have um, I don't have oil in my hair, which can attract lint. So I've tried it out and I liked it sometimes just in terms of smoothing the hair and I'm very, very delicate. However, I observe patterns and I observe the little details. So if you have very, very delicate, delicate hair, um, down the line that could cause issues, right? So I just did a nice size chop a while ago, and I'm still seeing, seeing more because my hair is so fine. This again is going to break off. So this is a lot of length for, for folks, right? I just cut this amount off. So this is a fully matured lock that started from a puffy double strand twist. So if this is any indication for folks when I'm saying fine Afro textured hair, this is what some of us are dealing with. So if you're constantly brushing and manipulating this, I see again, this is going to be another major chop. And this could be or break off right, where the hair is shedding because it just doesn't have a strong base. So perhaps this could uh, save some folks some um, some time, right? Because this might be a whole year or two years worth of, of hair and you may, want, you may want to experience length. 
So I'm noticing with very delicate hair, it just can't take this. My hair cannot take it. I may want it to take it. It can't take it, can't handle it. It wants to be left alone. So if you look at the difference between this, this is a, a, a puffy double strand twist when it started out. Right, they probably the volume could have been like this, and uh, you know the biggest thickest lock I have. Right, look at this. This is two locks, so it's very fine hair. It looks fuller, as I've um, shared on this channel before. What can perhaps be complementary to our hair is the Afro puff. So everything that we see everyone doing, after a while, you know, it may take you a while to learn. But it may not be a fit for your hair, which is why it's important to learn and to listen, to listen, to cultivate inner listening to your body, to your hair. It's your journey. So if I see that this is going to be yet another, look at all of these are going to break off. And I just did a major, like a major chop. So if this is any indication, right, I could have ended up with this. It was way down. It was here, not way down, down here. And I cut it to this. So fortunately, I did see that there's no um, buildup inside, right? And actually I have this thing with retraining my eyes. I was thinking like, wow, if all of my locks are flat, greetings, did you cut one off on you left the side that was a blunt end? Um, I just kept cutting. I was just getting excited about seeing what was inside the hair. So I don't know if I could have ended up with it like this because I'm the type of person, I, I love very, very short hair, but I wanted to see. And I also like to experience the length of the, just the experiment to see what our hair can do, right? Some of us may have grown up thinking our hair, our hair can't do this or can't do that or it breaks off. So I just wanted to see. So I cut off quite a bit and I kind of stopped here. I cut off a lot and then I just wanted to, to see. And I think also this one was a very, very weak lock because I used to put so much beads and so much embellishments in my, in my hair. So it created a lot of those weak spots that you see. The double strand twists got very, very compact over time, when you're squeezing little beads and squeezing all these hair ornaments on the hair, it becomes compact. So if you have greetings, if you have very, very fine hair, that may not be the way to go if you want to preserve it, right? Because again, all it is, these are some that have joined together. So I allow them to join. Back then, I didn't know what my hair was going to look like because um, Pretty much most of my hair is like now, these are double, they have combined, some are still combining. But this is several locks combined. They're flat and this is how you know they look. So that to emphasize, if you have very fine hair, you may feel that your hair is thin or you may be forecasting down the line to preserve your hair, right? We want to, we, we want to avoid traction alopecia, right? Of styles to give that, you know, that facelift. And um, it's pulling. I could, you could feel it. if we just slow down. That's why I share deep breathing and relaxation on this channel. It may seem like such a small thing, but that can really help us cultivate our inner listening. So there's a big difference between this little tiny thing that was real puffy. Now that it's compact, this is a mature lock, right? Which is also why I call these Afro locks. Why at one point I was like, this is a combination for me, the best of semi free form and the best of um, sister locks because it doesn't need any oil. Um, it doesn't need any products. All I'm doing is washing it and going, but I'm still learning. Maybe this could save some folks um, sometimes. And then in terms of the marrying, here's another thing. I invested in those little crochet needles. It's too, this hair, it can't take it. And so the, the one thing I'll say, this, my hair marries on its own. That's one thing. It will lock very easily. Right. So I can maybe just like maybe I've just assisted them a little bit and kind of like you go over this way with this one. You go over this way with that one. I've allowed them to, quote unquote, marry so they will have a stronger base. So this this is also going to be my marker now that I've cut this um, very mm -hmm, <laughs> love the message of radical self-acceptance. Why? Thank you. You know, as that's one of the, the biggest things I think that can give us a sense of Afro women of peace. And relaxation because I, it's too too many different forces coming at us and it's driving us mad. It has us as somebody as a fitness professional, also a nutrition coach. This is a big what I've observed. It's a big underlying tone of what is driving us to eat mindlessly is an anxiety and it has a backdoor effect. You, we may think that we're trying to diet and fast and do all this other stuff and then we wind up binging. 
because there's such an undercurrent of anxiety. So in radical self-acceptance and simple deep breathing, it's like bringing relaxation in so you can listen to your onboard innate internal guidance system and really start to listen and observe to what's really going on, not just from a superficial level, but um, going a little deeper, listening deeper. It's not so much superficial without the condemnation, without a bullying tone, even from ourselves, right? That a lot of times that bullying tone has come from outside um, with all these messages of what we need to do when we're comparing ourselves to folks on Instagram and the social media, or even folks that may seemingly have similar hair types, but somehow our style doesn't come out the same. You know, so I would just like to save people some time because in this experimentation, so this one I cut off and I didn't cut in any kind of system where I saw was hanging on and straggling or even I had pl played around with thread to hold on to the length. I was like, nah, old energy. Bye. I'm not holding on to it. Let's just see what the hair does. That's also what I've observed as part of the anxiety. Got to have the length. Anything to make me feel beautiful and more feminine. It's like relaxation to me is key. Relax. And that's something to be cultivated to um, if you don't have it. You can cultivate it. Just like if you don't have a, certain, a set of firm glutes, you can cultivate it. You can put work in. You can intentionally um, create and cultivate relaxation and listening. So with the brushing of the hair, something, a little thing that I've noticed is it feels great, right? And I would only brush very lightly when it's, um, when it's damp. But I no notice little small broken pieces in the sink. And I'm like, my intuition is like, the hair says, no, I, my hair's like, how many times I keep trying to tell you, stop, leave me alone, leave me alone. So if it's delicate and if it's breaking, if it's lots of, lots of little broken pieces, what's that saying? That's saying to me, you're breaking me off. So if the hair is already delicate and it's not a whole lot of them, leave it alone. So I literally, I just washed my hair, literally just washed it. So it's damp. I blotted it dry with a, with a towel. Um, and so it feels super clean, like it's light. Maybe the light is just starting to come up here where I am. So it definitely has a lot of shine, totally not clogged, clean, feels free, no issues with dandruff, no itching, but there's no hair. When it's wet, all I do is I smooth it. Sometimes I may tie it down with a little bit of a, um, of a scarf, but that's it. So I'm just noticing the listening and the observing the hair. If we're breaking it, again, if you have very fine, delicate hair, or even Afro textured hair, it's curling, kinking, and zigzagging. That's just what it does. It's not our vanilla counterparts where you can brush and you can smooth it. Maybe a teeny bit at the ends, which may are going to break off at some point anyway, just delicately. But again, without the oil, you're not attracting all the dirt and the lint. Sometimes like I have a little a gray sweater where um, I notice a little bit of stuff may get caught in the bottom. But for the most part, I'm not experiencing all the lint and the buildup because I'm not a, a, a sticky magnet with the oil for all of the um, the dirt and stuff. I love your message, radical self-acceptance. I think you have fine hair. I think it's um, bigger and better for the long run for strength. Yeah, so marrying them, I definitely intuitively, even though, again, that anxiety of, I don't know what the heck this is going to look like. Oh my gosh, I have fine hair. You know, again, I was looking at this one, whatever that one hair, I was like, imagine a whole bunch, all of my locks are flat, right? That's it. Um, it has a little bit of length now because I just washed it. It's going, it's going to shrink. It's flat. Not a whole lot of them. That is what it is. However, when it does dry, it's that the the afro, the very afro that we have is a benefit, right? To not seeing the sc scalp and it being uh, full and free and unencumbered. And then also, you know, the pieces that grow out, again, there's, as I've mentioned before, there's so many um, YouTube videos that talk about the hair growing away from the lock. So if it was a whole, a big tuff, I can just take my finger and gently, because this is not twisted, I don't do any twisting, zero, never. Um, I can gently just push it in with my finger, very gently in, and that's it, and smooth it, right? Or I can, I spritz it with water, filtered water, or the cleanest water available to you. That's it. But I just wanted to share today that um, even the brushing, you know, for our hair, if you have very delicate hair, if you listen and you observe the patterns, observe what your hair and your body and your skin is doing, 
Also, I used to have a tremendous amount of acne and I'm a very active. I love to be active. Being playful and sweating is a top priority for me. So maybe at some point, again, I'll say I may want to play in makeup, but it's, it's not my priority. I like to feel confident in my own skin and through the different phases of life. So I had um, quite a big um, blemish here the, the other day. And if somebody that's had a lot of acne, just like similar to someone that may have been very overweight, you can become very panicked. Like, oh my gosh, am I going to gain all this weight again? Or am I, is my face going to be looking like the sidewalk again? But I know now I'm crystal clear, allow the body to heal. And I, I think I mentioned an older video, an older video. I grew up with women were using Ambi skincare cream, bleaching cream <laughs> with the soap and all that, a whole set um, Venus de Milo, all of them smell the same. Um, all of these bleaching creams. And they all, I remember reading cause my aunties and the older women had them in my family and used to say, I think like six weeks it will fade this. And I had a, a big blemish when I get them and it's rare now it fades on its own. And that's primarily because it's a cycle of healing. The body will sh shed or old skin. But biggest thing is my food, my food, my food. I do not eat processed food. Do not. And I was a junk food junkie. So now I can rest and relax. I don't have to be so frank, freaked out or anxious. And it's interesting to observe your body's healing process, right? So I, I found that a lot of the marketing has us free, freaked out and anxious. And Afro women, we're just on the verge, just going crazy. And it has us, it triggers us to keep spending more money where I'd rather invest in my food, Right or seeds for growing because now um, I'm growing. I can, oh my gosh, I can harvest greens now pretty much every day enough for lunch and dinner. Fresh greens and they taste. I've never tasted greens so delicious. I didn't grow up a farmer, right? It tastes so delicious. Like there's a list. I'm telling you, uh, this is why I would say I am the uh, fitness coach and a personal trainer that encourages people to grow something. And yes, everybody can grow something, even if you're in a cold environment, even if you're in a city. This is not dieting. It's eating for beauty, eating for vitality, eating for longevity, eating for your mood, where your mood is, where your head is. If you're full of anxiety, that's going to affect your eating. It's like a ripple effect. It's a domino effect. That's going to affect your hair. That's going to affect your sleep. All of these things are affecting each other, whereas we're usually in anxiety buying more products. So I threw my shower caddy out years ago. And recently some folks were asking me about a shampoo. I did post a shampoo that I found here in this part of the world where I am now on the channel, but what it's a rarity to find something natural. To one point, um, one point I was only using teas and fruits and vegetables on my skin. My skin was the clearest ever on living foods, clearest ever, ever, you know, shout out to those folks. If you can relate, if you've had a tremendous amount of cystic acne, that was like, that was painful to me. Um, however, at some point on my, you know, my private sacred parts, I will use like um, Dr. Bronner's, which is so expensive over here, a teeny bottle of, of Dr. Bronner's. I think it was almost like $30 or something like that, a little small bottle. So I am the one that has always been big on used food, primarily inside and out and also make my own. So coconut oil is plentiful where I am. So I made my own coconut oil soap. So most likely that's something that I will venture in on. And I listen to how my skin and my body is responding to anything I put onto and into it. And that's to a minimal. If it's not food, if I can't ingest it, I really don't like to put it on um, my skin. And also I'm very um, aware of my um, lymphatic system. So I don't want any kinds. And this has been for years. There's certain things I've been doing for many years that I feel that I reap the benefit of. I don't, I can't tell you the last time I put a clogging deodorant underneath my arms and um, I eat onions, I eat garlic, I sweat a lot. Um, and I found I've just made a little baking soda concoction and I tried every natural deodorant on the market and they all gave out at some point or they just didn't work for my body. So a natural lifestyle, I don't smell funky. It's not an antiperspirant and I want my lymphatic system to sweat. So all of this is a listening. It's a listening to my body and how my body responds. If I can feel my tummy and I have, um, if I'm bloated or if I have extra adipose tissue, that means that I'm not digesting the food properly, or I'm even with living foods, too much or old waste, too much salt. There's a listening. There's no way around <laughs> listening. If we're not listening to our body, if we're not respecting the process, if we're not respecting the fact and 
just being fully <clears throat> an acknowledgement of the things we've done to our body. We'll have to pay the bill. Things that went on into our body, they have to come out and they don't always come out when we feel like we want them to come out. Same thing if we've done damage to our hair and our scalp from these harsh chemicals, right? And these chemicals are affecting our bloodstream, our, our mood, you know, they're going into our 401k um, plan for um, our future. Every single thing we put on the body, we do to the body, it counts. There's no get out of jail free card. One colonic, I used to work at a center where they're colonics and massage therapists for many, many years. I've had them. And but at one point it occurred to me, if you just stop Stop the man, the hair, my hair is telling me, stop. I'm trying to tell you, leave me alone. Minimal. I don't want to be handled. The body and the skin is telling you, please stop putting the, the trash in it. Stop the cycle. And many of us don't want to really acknowledge to stop. Or even we realize if you slow down, listen, observe, you can really know, even if it takes you a while, what you are doing, you can get to the root of what it is that you're doing to keep that process going. If that's your sleep, you can eat all the healthy, raw, raw, whole living foods, but there's no substitute for sleep. You can eat all of these expensive supplements. That's not a subs. That's not food. If we have to eat supplements all the time, that's saying that your, your intake is deficient. That's telling you something, right? So there's a listing, there's an acknowledgement. All of these commercials and marketers will have you on a whole stroll. <laughs> They'll have you feeling insecure in a cycle of triggering you. If I just get this one little product, everything is going to be good. But however, it's not the foundation. If we don't get our foundation um, in order, and that comes with a listening, right? So we can discern and be guided to what to do and our experimentation listening. You may really want to eat this thing, but if you see a pattern, every time you eat this thing, your skin breaks out. It is what it is. So we're going to keep taking all kinds of digestive aids to force the body to break down something. What it's showing you is having a response, right? What kind of greens did you grow? Um, so right now, which I am so in love with, oh my gosh, broccoli rabe or broccoli rapini, exquisite. Sweet tater greens, uh, kale, several types of kale, Siberian kale. I have new kale coming up, um, dwarf kale, Siberian kale, um, beautiful lettuce. Um, let's see, we have all kinds of herbs. Oh, mustard greens, turnip greens. We have some parsnip um, that's coming, lots of herbs. Oh my gosh, I'm in love again with herbs. I mean, I'm always in love with herbs. These herbs smell so wonderful. It just makes you think of all the time for years, I remember a food co-op, and for years buying all of these expensive essential oils. And I'm telling you, I have some oregano bush with the um, growing fresh oregano where the seed is so potent. I've gotten several huge, giant, almost like a tree of oregano bush. And oregano has so many different antimicrobial, antibacterial properties that you can use for your hair. With all of these, this quarantine stuff, you can use for your throat um, to open up the lungs. This for your feet, athlete's foot, all of you. There's so much you can do with the fresh herbs. And then also the fresh marjoram. Oh my gosh. It, it smells like lemon verbena uh, and lemony smells and lemon balms are one of my favorite, right? As well as lemongrass, the essential oil, because it's a mood lifter, right? But the fresh marjoram, I would tell my sister about it. She didn't get it. Now it's like, if you're stressed, she's like, hold on, take a leaf of this and just put it in front of your nose. Oh my gosh. It is so almost indescribable from fresh herbs. And people would laugh and joke at me for years. Like if I'm describing bananas, like, you know, I know we had the, the Sebiites and some folks, you know, shout out to, you know, veneration to Dr. Sebi and everybody, we can talk about, you know, other people's experiences, but living in a, um, having lived in a tropical environment while I'm seeing so many different varieties of bananas and how um, things uh, pollinate and even hybridize in nature is a different context from living in the city and just reading everything in a book and not having a firsthand experience. So it's one of the reasons why I'm constantly encouraging people to grow something, encouraging your children to grow something. It activates the inner listening. It activates paying attention to details. It activates paying attention to the seasons. It activates a humility for the things that we are garbling down without any kind of respect, um, knowing that these things are gonna become a part of your body, a part of your organs. So it's activating another type of critical thinking and intelligence. <laughs>
if that makes sense. So those are some of the greens. Broccoli is also growing as well as broccoli, rapini, um, cabbage. We didn't get a lot of cabbage, um, but we're about lots and lots of tomatoes. Oh my gosh, our tomatoes are so like stunningly beautiful. Like it's a miracle to me because I didn't grow up in the Caribbean or down south, right? So my me, I didn't get that. Some of my siblings um, did, but they are so ten. Oh, collars, lots of collars. They are so, and okra is coming up right now, new batch of okra. But the, they're so tender. Like it is so, it's so tender and delicious. It has me going back in the yard like several times to pick, to pick greens, which makes me get excited about planting um, more greens. So those are some of the things I'm growing. And so I know what's in the food. Um, my sister and I, we have several years worth of um, fruits and vegetables. And I built a compost system just myself with, with um, br bricks and chicken wire and recycled pallets that I've dragged down the street um, to build a compost um, system. Three bins now, it's a four bin system. And it's years of what I would call black gold of compost. So all of that nutrition is going back into the soil. So now my tongue is very attuned to, I can taste if there's a flavorless watermelon, um, I can taste certain people have not, they're growing the food so fast, they're not letting the ground rest and putting nutrition back into the um, into the food. So all of these, this intelligence, this common sense kicks in because you become more aware of cycles. And if that's your method of thinking, your mode of thinking, it transfers over into the other areas of your life. Once your eyes are open, they're, they're open. Once you have firsthand experience, you have firsthand experience. So I encourage you to grow something and to eat the most beautiful, water-rich, nutrient-dense, beauty food available. That is not a diet. <laughs> it's a paradigm shift. So that's the type of work and the type of distinctions that we go over in the cocoon. And for folks that have been asking about the cocoon, but a cocoon is a process of going in. So I found, you know, just intuitive. Sometimes you're like, you know what? I need to go in. Ain't nothing happening in no club. You know, it's nothing out in the street for me. You know, spend a lot of your life chasing retail and chasing tail. And you don't, you're really left with nothing. Right. You don't get anything back for your money. And we know there are huge chunks of time that we spend on the screen. If you're going to use the screen, you might as well use it productively. Right. We know that these computers are highly impressionable and highly programmable. So why not program them yourself? So I would say there's enough time. It's just how are we honest and accountable for how we are managing our time. So the cocoon is a process of taking the time to literally go in and manage your time very effectively and eat the best foods, right? And cultivate a movement practice and to declutter and to start your garden and to cultivate um, your garden is spending quality time with your self. And in traditional rites of passage programs, when you go into a cocoon, there's certain wisdom, if you will, that you're learning about the plants, about the plants as medicine, how to really maximize the foods that are around you and to flip them every which way to Sunday, as well as techniques or practices of self-care. It is a concerted and very intentional um, process of you turning in to also do shadow work and to get to the root of a lot of your self-sabotaging behaviors rather than add more things on top of it without getting to the root. So that is the cocoon process. Is process. It is an intentional turning in for a period of time, right? There's cycles like a baby comes out in nine months and in fitness and personal training, um, you can pretty much, if you're consistent, see definite changes, definitive changes in cycles of three months, right? Which is usually when you want to change your um, program. So the cocoon is a process of going in. Just fell back into cooked foods for the hundredth time, not even healthy cooked foods, just junk. So in Thambika, and I sent you um, uh, a message, actually. So more so than cooked, because we can label it cooked, is getting to the root, really making some distinctions around what cooked is. Is it cooked or whether it's cooked or even if it's raw foods, right? Which is why I invite people to... Um, expand or consider energy consumption beyond the labels, right? Because even, and I can only say this from my perspective, because I know of a few um, living food chefs who I highly respect, who are some of the most talented on the planet. And so folks 
um, will ask for recipes. And I love preparing delicious foods, but I have noticed in my practice and also in my personal life that we can be gorging on nuts and gorging on avocado, right? If we're gorging and we're over consuming this physical food, even though it's whole living foods, which I think is a huge distinction, right? From even processed quote unquote, vegan foods. Uh, there's a big distinction with living foods. So however, I don't think that's the end of the line. I think there's still more to discover in our patterns of consumption and why we're eating what we're eating and the amounts that we're eating. I would just say many of us are still overeating even with living foods and there's a reason why. So in the cocoon, we're also doing this shadow work and cultivating that inner listening. Quite often, there's several things that I found that are still missing which is why folks can continue to sell us diet books. I never, even when I was doing fitness competitions, I always knew that I did not, I don't want to diet. I don't want to diet. I want a way of living that is sustainable into my mature years um, that I can take on the road with me um, wherever I go. And that I found comes from principles, getting clear on your principles of why you're doing what you're doing. Then you take the dieting thing off the table. Um, you may not notice that um, your patterns are quote unquote addictive, or I would even say more so than addictive because I think it's a, it can be loaded and tricky when you're labeling yourself. When you're, um, your pattern of consumption, if it is more, more so than addictive, I would say compulsive. That can be addictive if you're eating substances that I would say substances I call many substances, substances masquerading as food. I do not consider them as food. And that's huge coming from a junk food junkie, right? With a family history of morbid obesity. And I'm very, very keenly aware that food and many of our habits are socially acceptable, slow suicide. Now, some people may think that is extreme. I'm just very, very clear. So that clarity being very clear saves me years of time of struggling because there are just many things, which I'm even amazed today, that I just will not do. As a person that I might have considered myself greedy or more so than greedy, that's labeling ourselves compulsive in the way that I was eating to soothe myself with these flavorings, even if it was from the health food store, right? Because I swapped off a lot of my junk food from the bodega <laughs> for junk food from the food co-op and from the health food store, which were much more pricey. The quality of the ingredients was better. However, it was still very compulsive. Right. So there's a range and there's a spectrum and everyone's journey is um, is a personal is a personal journey. I have found in my um, own self-care practice um, practices I've had over the years. Definitely, I've never regretted any of the education that I've invested in, but so creating support for myself and education has been huge in me not going back to certain things. And also I've taken full ownership over different experimentation. Right. So that has been something that I value and that I've been committed to for many, many years. So I reap the benefit of that. Well, some people may just copy somebody very quickly, do something for two days or four days to just to say I've done something. I did it. But if you try to skip over the process, similarly with fitness, it's usually it doesn't stick. Most people I've worked in a, a fasting center, a nutritional fasting center for years. And I saw many people did not stick. So for me to just say I'm I'm, I'm vegan. Or I don't eat um, cadavers, or I don't eat flesh, but um, I'm just totally addicted to salt, right? Or I'm totally addicted to sugar, right? And I need to have 40 bananas at a time, you know? Or if my body is still not dropping the um, all the excess adipose tissue, or if I'm not addressing my injuries, then it's still not the 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 full um, the full picture. So hopefully that makes sense. But all that back to here before I left the. Take home is that the brushing may still be too much if you have very delicate, um, fine hair. And as I'm sitting here, because I don't have oil, it's drying, um, very, very, um, it's drying quickly. So this is what it looks like. It was just down here. My shirt is wet from it. It's going to pull up and it's going to shrink up. This now being, I've cut it much shorter than every, than the rest of the stuff that I cut is now going to be my marker. And I had this thing with retraining my eyes. I was like, wow. Before I was like, what the heck would my hair look like if I left it all like this? But the longer I look at it, the more I actually like it. <laughs> There's one little lot, the more I look at so I, I'm very intentional about retraining my eyes to appreciate my own hair and skin. This is my vehicle. It's mine. I'm not asking for permission. I'm not asking for validation. 
And I sit with myself. These are my lips. Sometimes it has a scar. Sometimes it has a mark or, you know, it's not a flaw. This is me. This is my footprint. This is my expression out here on the planet. And I'm going to be fully expressed just because I said so, because I said so. And I sit and I have made, I wouldn't say I, one time I would have said force, but it's not a force. I support myself in sitting with myself. This is what it is. I could give two peach pits about what social media says. It doesn't mean I'm immune, that I can never be affected. However, I'm very, very intentional. And I'm just, I have experienced, I just feel more good about myself, which and feeling good about yourself in a very authentic way will transfer over to your food choices. It will definitely transfer over into your, and really, Shout out to all the young women, and if there are any young men here, especially young women, um, ages 19, teenagers to 20s, 30s. In the absence of wisdom, aka life experience, we put ourselves in harm's way, even women that are mature. Put ourselves in harm's way, and I'm going to keep it real for a moment. Shout out to my young women out there. Put ourselves in harm's way, sexually. Smart, smart folks, got good grades in school or whatever. Put ourselves in harm's way, our reproductive organs. Put ourselves in harm's way in terms of people that do not demonstrate with consistent actions, respect. Someone can sleep with you. That does not mean they respect you, protect you, or really care about you. So we don't really get all those distinctions of what love is, all the pressure, somebody love me. Infatuation is not respect is not responsible be, responsible behavior. So someone is not demonstrating responsible behavior. If they would have you put yourself in harm's way, see, love and responsibility, love, spirituality equals responsibility. If someone wouldn't say like, wow, I care about this person. So even if they wanted to do this, I'm not willing to risk their health. That's it. You see, simple principles can give you much clarity, can give you much more leverage sometimes than even reading a million self-help books. But if we still find ourselves putting ourselves in harm's way, if you know something is jacking up your skin, if you know something is giving you yeast infections, if you know something is is your that you're eating while it's giving you a party in your mouth, it's compromising your heart, your organs, your liver, then perhaps that's something you want to consider. Why am I doing that? Why am I placing myself in harm's way? So that's from auntie. <laughs> <laughs> That's from Auntie. You can take it if it doesn't resonate. Feel free to leave it right here, but perhaps that could save you a lot of harms of excuse me of heartache in terms of putting yourself in harm's way. I'm so big on simplicity and clarity. It can save you. There's some things you're still going to experience, but there are many things that you don't have to experience the hard way. There's lots of products that you don't need to purchase. You don't need to purchase everything off of the health food store shelf because it says organic, every shampoo and every product. Again, I find these things drive us crazy. You got more and more stuff that becomes more clutter, which is more agitation. So simplicity can save you a lot of time and give you a lot of relaxation and you can really enjoy. I just, there's something you can enjoy your own eyebrows and your own eyelashes, the, the anxiety to alter ourselves and to dismember and cut off body, perfectly healthy body parts. Who is setting the tone to say that of what's acceptable, what the standard is? That we gotta slick down, slick down every hair. We gotta slick down, why do I don't have to slick down nothing? No, this is it, this is it, this is the beauty standard. That there's a confidence that comes from within inside when you radically, radical self-acceptance, radical. This is it. When you feel good about yourself, you're going and you can you can give a litmus test. You can give a litmus test as to how you feel about yourself. Or you just resign. See the comfort with the potato chips. I'm making myself feel better. But let's be honest. See, that's why I call it a backdoor mentality. Do we really feel good about something we know is giving us gas, having us fart all over the place, giving us stinky gas, and making us drop turds down in the toilet? Is that really feeling good about ourselves? So I question. I question anybody that's sharing a toxic treat with me where, where their health is not on point and they're going to share that habit with me. 
I, I question anyone that's going to share a substance with me that's going to make me lethargic and less sharp in my critical thinking. I question anyone that's going to share a substance with me where I may not be cognizant of what's going on and I can't make a good decision to get out of harm's way, you know, when it comes to going out or drinking or, or whatever. I question it. Shout out to my young women. This could save you some time. And my young women in older, mature bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sending y'all all some warm, positive vibrations and affirming that we all create. Be very intentional about creating a great day on purpose. Whatever's going on around you, whatever has happened to you. Yes, some things have really happened to you, have happened to us all. In any way, I'm intending to create a day, a great day on purpose that I can be proud of just because I said so. How about that? <laughs> I'll see y'all. So feel free to subscribe to the channel. Check check out Quasa with a K, Peaceful Eating on TikTok. Um, I don't go so much on Facebook. I'd be very mindful of this YouTube thing because they have all these bots and all kinds of predatory energy. I, I don't even have the space sometimes to be angry at it. Just people have all kinds of behaviors. It's all kind of predatory energies that are competing for the attention of your psyche, your mind space, triggering you to be a human battery, right? To use your, your body as a, a, a pacifier. <laughs> and, and folks that are insecure are not going to have any problem sharing their toxicity with you, their diseases with you, their stinking thinking, their victimhood with you. So you're invited to, you know what? Go into the cocoon. <laughs> See ya soon.